Okay, how are you? There you are. Yeah, my camera needs to be off because uh, I'm using it for the live stream. So good. Seems to be working okay. Very good. Oh, and by the way, guys, um, the Google Meeting session for tomorrow, the URL might be a bit different, okay? Because uh, I need to turn off this one here and then the starting another one before the exam tomorrow. So I'm going to post the final uh, Google Meet session URL on the Facebook group uh, when the time is closer. I think I'm going to do that maybe tomorrow 9 a.m. So tune in to the Google Facebook post that I listed everything about the midterm there so that you guys won't miss uh, the final Google Meet link. Yes, those who are on and can see the live stream, could you post uh, so that I know that uh, we are live, uh, no matter what uh, YouTube said, that how many more minutes uh, to go on live. All right, great. Yeah, because you're tuning in for the live stream in the meantime in the Google meeting. Yeah, so maybe I turn off the voice, uh, the microphone input from the Google Meet. That way, there you go. You should be hearing only one input, right? There. <laughs> so this is... Uh, uh, this is an echo sound input, so, so I should be singing. <laughs> that should create a nice uh, surround sound effect. All right, good, it's time. So this is week eight. Wait, but can you hear us too? Or do you only see us? Um, yeah, Constantine, I only see you. Yeah, I'm not hearing you though. So let me see. Yeah, that might be because um, my headset is also occupied. Um, let me see. So I'm not hearing you guys though. So if you guys do have questions to ask tomorrow, make sure that your mic is working so that I can hear you, okay? So I see now Tim and Constantine and Ata. Is that uh, the correct pronunciation? Yeah, good. Oh, I, I hear Ata, so good. Okay, good. All right, seems to be working. Yeah, the, res the resolution might be really bad with uh, Google Meet, but uh, it's okay. We just need to be able to see roughly each other and then being able to talk to each other in case you have questions in the middle of the exam. All right. So now let's uh, go on with the lecture. So this is week eight, also the midterm week. 
um, and I don't hear you on Google Me. No, you don't because you are probably tuning in also from the uh, YouTube live stream. So team, um, the, I turn off the mic for Google Me so that uh, these other guys on Google Me won't be hearing me twice. All right. Um, so yeah, I know. Because uh, some of you are on the YouTube Live and some of you on the uh, Google Meet. In case you're on both, you hear both. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so this is the YouTube Live stream. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this is week eight, the midterm week. Um, tomorrow is kind of important because uh, that exam there is going to count for 20% of the semester grade. Uh, and I'm sure that you are... In the meantime, anxious and uh, can't wait to get it over with. Um, so, uh, what I can tell you is that uh, the problems are generally easy, straightforward. There are some tricky ones, but not many. Okay, um, for those uh, uh, who are not quite familiar with uh, the Google form online testing, uh, what I have uh, talked about earlier at the beginning of the semester uh, is this. The midterm exam is going to be long so that I will occupy you all the time during the entire 100 minutes. Okay, so it's just uh, for you to, you know, to exercise what you learned. Okay, they're generally simple. Okay, and it's open book, open internet. If you look it up, you also see the solutions real easy. Okay, so you guys don't need to talk to each other or exchange with, you, with each other to see what the answers are. Chances high that you guys might have misconceptions. So uh, if you just use the 100 minutes time to look things up, that will be even that will be great already. All right. Um, OK, so and so we have uh, the midterm exam and we have the uh, PA. Let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't have PA this week, uh, but we do have three quizzes doing. Now these three quizzes, um, you'll have to work on them anyway because chances high that they will appear on the midterm exam, all right? So um, yeah, we do have three quizzes doing this Friday, and but there's no PA doing. Good. Uh, Ata, I have a question. If with UDP, we are not sending any X or an X, why are we putting sender IP address and port number on the datagram. I see. Okay, interesting question. Yeah, so even in UDP packet, there's still the sender IP address and the port, I, a sender port number, even though we know that uh, UDP is actually the connectionless uh, multiplexing, demultiplexing, which means we only look at the destination IP address and the port number. So why having the sender's IP and port number? Uh, on the packet. Well, they are not really being used. They are just there. Okay. Uh, I agree with you. It's not really necessary. We can probably um, sort of shorten the UDP's packet header. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just that um, TCP's packet header is going to come with a lot more and uh, people might be using the source port number and IP address for other purposes. For example, if you look at the slides on UDPs, multiplexing and demultiplexing, the way the server figure out what should be the destination IP address and port number being used for the packets to go back, it's actually looking into the source IP and port number from the incoming packet. Okay, So even though the source IP and port number are not used okay, for demultiplexing purpose, but they are still useful Okay, for the server there to find out what should be the destination IP and port number. Does that make sense? Okay. So if it does, just let me know. All right, so the topics for today, uh, we're going to wrap up RDT 2.2. We just have the sender side of the finite state machine uh, need to be um, derived. So coming from 2.1, 2.2 is just the version of 2.1 without having two separate. Uh, packet formats. So we do have app packet as well as 
negative egg packet, so the neck packet in 2.1. Now let's try to simplify 2.1 such that we have only just one packet format, the egg with sequence numbers and using the sequence number to tell um, whether this is a positive egg or a negative egg. All right, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and try to finish RDT 2.2. We have already finished uh, deriving the receiver side of 2.2, so now it's just the sender side of 2.2. Now let's try to develop uh, the sender's finite state machine. Again, let's borrow 2.1's sender finite state machine and start from there. This is the initial state. Uh, we wait for call from above. And if there is one, then we generate starting from packet zero. And then we enter the wait for egg next state. Now in case a nag is in, we do have this is nag check, isn't it? Okay. So if that is the case, we trans retransmit the data. Otherwise, everything is fine and this is a positive egg, so we do nothing and move to the next state and get a call again from above. But the thing in 2.2 is this. Well, there's no such thing as negative acknowledgement packet. In fact, both positive, both negative acknowledgements are just egg and carrying different sequence numbers. So this will also be a is egg check. Okay. But the difference is, is going to be the sequence number they are expecting being different. So what should be the sequence number we expect We expect here to pass so that we move on to the next state? We are expecting zero, right? So the sequence number here should be carrying zero. So we should be checking is act and particularly sequence number being zero. Therefore, we can move on. Send the next packet. If everything goes well, we should be getting another egg packet then carrying sequence number what? One, because we just sent out packet one. Right. Now, the neck here, uh, check, can no longer be valid and we'll be also doing the is egg check. But what should be the matching sequence number here to trigger this action? Well, we just send packet zero. If packet zero was corrupted, the receiver would be what? Sending the last data packet received okay. So that should be what? Sequence number one. Mm -hmm. Similarly for the check here, it should also be is act, but sequence number what? Zero. And that take us uh, to the sender side of the finite state machine. So we change this line as well as this line. So this line is what? Expecting zero. So check whether the sequence number uh, equals zero. This is also now Isaac, and this should be carrying sequence number one. And that's actually all of RDT 2.2. Now, before we go into RDT 3.0, uh, we'll start with actually a quiz. So this is quiz 14. Okay, it's called the Lord of the Ring quiz. All right. So the story is this. If you look at the map here, okay, what you see is uh, this is the, the Middle Earth okay, uh, in the Lord of the Ring world. Okay, so this is the Battle of the Helm's Deep. Uh, I don't know if you read a novel or watch the movie. Mm -hmm. So Saruman you probably recall, right? That's the evil wizard there. Okay, so Sauron's troop are pushing in to the Helm's Deep. Okay. And the King of Rome has no choice but to call for help from Gondor. So Gondor is uh, this kingdom down below here, okay. uh, administered by human, the main kind. So Helm's Deep is in the middle here. Okay. So these are the horse people, also main kind. Okay. Now, there's this white mountain in the middle. Okay. So the white mountain there is full of these things. Yeah, the orcs. And these orcs eat people. Okay, they eat all sorts of living creatures. In fact, so now pretend that you are Gandalf the Wise, the Wise Wizard, the White Wizard. Okay, how can you make sure the Gondor gets the call for help? Okay, so uh, the King of Rohan is sending messengers. All right. Okay, 
uh, but that might not be the best choice because uh, these orcs in the middle might be eating the messengers. Okay, so maybe sending one messenger might not be the good thing. But how? Hmm. Sending more or what? But the key question here is, how do you make sure that Gondor gets the call for help, okay, no matter what you do? Okay. So this is a slightly open question. Just think of it. Now, this is a Middle Earth. Anything is possible. So feel free uh, to come up with ways. I mean, you're powerful. You're the Gandalf, the wizard. All right. So you're, you guys have three minutes uh, to think about it. Yeah, that's one way. Uh -huh. So team one, I guess, uh, Rocket is team one, is suggesting using those big eagles. Okay. Or I think there was one Gandalf being trapped up in the tower, being um, sort of uh, kidnapped it by Saruman. So he was actually talking to the bird or to the butterfly or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, using using non-human creatures to pass the message, I guess. Team here. Oh, somehow make messengers invisible. Okay. Interesting. All right, it's Constantine here. Have Gangdo send an egg. Okay. So make Gangdo work like the receiver of RDT 2.2 or 2.1, I see. Does that count as an answer? Yes, that does. <laughs> so using bird. So, hey, Rocky, for your information, that is called the out-of-band communication. Mm -hmm. So instead of crossing or use messenger, regular messengers crossing the mountain, uh -huh. You, you know, use another channel. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. Using heavy smoke. Oops, okay, time's up. So how you are saying using smoke, okay? So that is also out of band communication, right? Yeah, I, I recall in the novel that there are these uh, relay uh, sort of watching posts, okay? So uh, they are close enough so that they can see each other. So if one of the stations set up smoke, uh, the other can relate in setting up smokes. And uh, so having these smoke chains, eventually Gondor on the other side of the mountain can see, oh, Help Steve is calling for help. Okay. So that is also out of band communication. Uh, RNG here, send multiple messengers. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you send many. So in case one of them or two of them, yeah, gets eaten by the orcs. Okay, there'll be at least one of them. So you add redundancies uh -huh, uh, in the transmission pass. So that's another way. Uh, Darius was saying use multiple passengers. Yeah, the same as RNG. All right. Okay. So at least one of the messengers reaching Gondor, then Gondor can send the acknowledgement back, just like Constantine was referring to. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Constantine was worried that in case the messenger uh, is lost somewhere in the middle, right? Then Gondor does not know exactly that the Helms, the Rohan people, is calling for help. So, yeah, Helms Deep here is continuing continuing sending messengers until yeah Gondor gets. Uh, the messenger and sends back Ag until the king gets an Ag back. Yes. All right. Yeah, so good. So, hey, generally three solutions, right? Out of band communication. So it's out of expectation for the orcs. So they cannot be intercepting the message. The other is redundancy. So team 13 and 12 is saying that let's send multiple data packets. Hopefully one of them gets through. Therefore, uh, the Gondor people can send back a messenger to act. Okay. And Constantine there is saying that maybe, yeah, uh, send a messenger if that is lost in Y Mountain, then send another one until uh, Gondor people gets the message and Gondor people sends back an act. Oh, just by the way, you might need to send the uh, act also multiple times just in case uh, some of the messengers carrying the act message don't get dropped. Okay, good. So uh, you get an idea. Okay, the reason of the quiz is this. Until now, uh, version uh, 1.0 assuming no error at all in the underlying channel, but version 2 is only assuming there's bit error. That is also saying that these messengers coming from Helmsteep or coming from Gondor, uh, they will arrive at the other end, just that uh, some of the messages they carry might be misinterpreted. But what happened in real life is that hey, the messengers might not really reach the other end at all. So you could have the entire message loss, entire messenger loss, or in terms of data network, it's called the packet loss. So these data packet coming from the sender and the acknowledgments or negative acknowledgments coming from the receiver, they might just be dropped in the middle of the network. So RDT 3.0 here is trying to address well, the, the packet loss. version of RDT, the RDT 3.0. In version 3, we are going to make it very general. So there could be bit errors in the data packet, in the acknowledgement packets, but there could also be losses of the data packets or the acknowledgement packets. So the new assumption here is very general. The underlying channel might have bit errors, but it might also have packet losses. Both at the data side as well as the ACK side. Now, all these mechanisms we have in version 2, checksum, X retransmission, and the sequence numbers to avoid duplicates uh, will help, but only help for yeah bit errors. So, in case of packet losses, not enough. So we need to add extra mechanisms. And the extra mechanism is this. The sender waits uh, for some amount of time for the act to come back. If the act does not come back within the time window, then retransmit the packet. Okay, so retransmit the data packet if no act comes back within that timeout interval. All right, so what we're doing here is to require setting of a countdown timer per data packet being sent. Okay, so when the data being sent, timer gets started, that timer is going to tick. If act comes in before the timer expires, cancel the timer. If there's no act coming in and the timer expires, retransmit the data packet. Right? So that's pretty much all to address the packet loss issue. Now, hey, some of you might be wondering, hmm, what should be the timeout interval there, right? Hey, internet delay could be changing quite a lot over time. So these data packets can be just delayed or the egg packets coming back can just be delayed. So in case uh, they are slightly longer than the timer that we have set up, then we will be retransmitting data unnecessarily. Yes. Okay. Some of the retransmissions might be unnecessarily a duplicate. 
Just like uh, when ACK is corrupted, the retransmission from the data center in 2.1 is also unnecessary. But it's okay, we already have the mechanism right there, which is the sequence number. That's going to address the duplicate issue, so no worry. Even though if we didn't set the timer quite right, it's just that there will be a lot more uh, unnecessary retransmission if the countdown timer is too short. All right, so hey, determining what is the duration for the countdown timer, that is also an art. We'll also see later in TCP how that is calculated, how that is estimated. All right, so yeah, sequence number is necessary again in RDT 3.0. The receiver needs to specify the sequence numbers for the X, just like the data assigned needs to specify the sequence numbers for the data packets. And this is RDT 3.0 sender. Well, the usual technique, yeah, let me draw a line. So we just focus on one side of it, you'll see that the other side is similar. So what do we have here? Starting from the initial state, yeah, get a call from above, generate the packet, starting from sequence number zero. And what? Wow, we have these timer stuff, right? Starting a timer. And this is the transition next. If everything is going smoothly, receiving an ACK, it's not corrupted, and it's indeed uh, ACK for zero. Then what? Stop timer. Now, if things don't go the, all that well uh, and the timer expires, then retransmit the packet and start the timer again. Because, hey, we just sent the data again. Then the timer needs to be refreshed. Now, what is a bit unusual is in this transition. So what is this transition into that too? Well, yeah, the packet coming back from the receiver, if it's corrupted or if it's clear that it's a negative acknowledgement, previously, what, do, what did we do? We retransmit packet, right? Like calling UDT send, send packet here. But we actually do what? Nothing this time. Hmm. Would that work? If it's yeah corrupted ACNAC or a negative acknowledgement and we do nothing, would that work? You know what? Hey, there's this transition, right? Yeah, so sender here would just not work uh -huh, in case we get this explicit, okay? signals from the receiver something is wrong but eventually the timer is gonna fire as well so that packet is gonna be retransmitted it's just that hey do we with these situations we're just you know gonna wait so we'll just always wait until time right. how do you like that now I'll let you ponder how you like RDT 3.0. Um, in the meantime, let's move on and see a few examples of RDT 3.0 in action. So scenario number one here is the no loss scenario. So everything is going well. Data, egg, data, egg. So you see, packet zero being sent, receiver here receive zero and send back egg zero. Egg arriving at the sender side, yeah, receive what? Uh, move to the wait for call from above for packet one state. So send packet one, act one, send packet zero, act zero, and go on and on and on. So this is a very straightforward scenario. Now the second scenario where we begin to see packet loss. Packet zero go, act zero comes back. Packet one goes, but dropped. So what's going to happen here? The receiver is not going to receive anything. And the sender side has a timer, right? So that's going to tick, tick, tick until, yep, time out. Resend packet one and restart timer. So act one comes in. Hey, there's a timer going on here, but because act comes in before the timer fires, so that timer gets canceled. So packet zero go, egg zero comes back. So this is the 
single packet loss scenario. And the third scenario is the egg loss case. So packet zero gets out, egg zero comes back, packet one goes, and egg one get lost. What's gonna happen there is the timer for packet one is gonna tick and tick and tick until what? Expiration. So this is gonna trigger packet one being resent, and finally egg one gets received, and data zero being out again. Now what's a bit unusual here in scenario 3 versus 2 is that yeah, packet 1 was actually received already uh, but it's received again uh, because the egg was the one being lost okay. No worry because this is packet 1 and this is packet 1 For two consecutive packets carrying the same sequence number receiver will not extract data and pass it further on Receiver just send the egg back again Okay, and that's going to clear packet 1 and therefore packet 0 can go on further. Scenario number 4 is to illustrate this case, premature timeout. So that is when the timeout interval is this long, but the egg and data takes a long time to take a round trip back. All right. The scenario goes like this, packet 0 goes, egg 0 back, packet 1 goes, Act one, yeah, takes longer than usual to come back. So at this time point, timer expires and packet one here gets retransmitted. So packet one gets retransmitted before act one can come back here. So when packet one gets retransmitted, timer for packet one is restarted. But the good thing is, hey, act one actually just, you know, arrived. So from the sender's point of view, what's going to happen there is sender thought, ooh, egg for the packet I just sent has arrived, so cool. Cancel the timer and send the next packet. So packet zero goes. And that's going to trigger egg zero and come back. And data one goes, egg one comes back, data Zero goes, act zero comes back. All right. Well, I hope it's not it's just that easy because we are actually not yet talking about hmm, when packet one arrive at the receiver, what's gonna happen? Well, receiving packet one and receiver there will see this is a duplicate because I just received packet one, right? So this is duplicate, ignore it, don't pass it up to the application layer but still generate the acknowledgement to ensure that the sender is notified. Mm -hmm. So, Act 1 will travel back. Now, sender here receive Act 1. That's right after packet 0 is sent. What does that mean? Well, the sender there receiving a corrupted Act or an acknowledgement that's not quite in sequence number that's expected then it's probably a negative acknowledgement. So, corrupted acknowledgement, negative acknowledgement that should trigger retransmission in version 2. But in RDT 3.0, what do we do there? We actually ignore it, right? So some of us are not very comfortable about just simply wait until the timer. But you see here, hey, this will actually not trigger any further packet being generated. You'll see an advantage in the next scenario where if we run RDT 3.0 with quick retransmission when there's act corruption or negative acknowledgement. So you see here, delay act, timeout expires first, packet one goes first. And act one there generates packet zero to go and so on and so forth. Okay. So this generates act one to send. But if yeah, we are not running RDT 3.0, but an RDT 3.0 with what retransmission upon corrupted act or a negative act, then we send what packet zero. Okay, again. Because obviously packet zero is corrupted, therefore we get 
ACK1. So retransmit packet 0. And that's going to trigger another ACK0. You see, packet 1, packet 1. ACK1, ACK1. Packet 0, packet 0. ACK0, ACK0. So for every data packet, for every ACK packet, there's going to be what? A parallel sending, duplicate of it. Is that good? Even though we try to retransmit early. Not that good either, right? Comparing this case and the previous case. So uh, a trade-off in the design of RDT 3.0 there. Okay? We thought that, hey, delay everything till the time it expire is not that smart. But uh, we ended up saving uh, bandwidth in the end even though the retransmission is a little bit late. All right, so interesting, isn't it? We thought originally that's not very smart to delay retransmission until timeout. But you see also that hey, it also eliminates uh, unnecessary, consistent, persistent uh, double transmission of packets and eggs. So that saves also bandwidth. Now, just like uh, quiz 13 and 14, uh, sorry, just like quiz uh, 12 and 13, we exercise uh, how the sender and the receiver of RDT 2.1 interact with each other. So in quiz 15, let's exercise, okay, using RDT 3.0. How would the sender receiver interact given the scenario? All right, so uh, the scenario is this. Send one packet, so look at the line at the bottom. So I'm asking you to show uh, the trans transitions being triggered in sequence, okay, in time. Send one packet, but the packet is lost. But there are no more losses or bit errors afterwards. Okay. And uh, both uh, the sender and the receiver is going to start from the initial state. So that's going to be from yeah, the upper left at the center side and uh, towards the left side of the state in the receiver. Uh, for this quiz, you have uh, five minutes to think it through. Okay, so sender here sends one data packet, but that packet is lost in the middle of transmission. Okay, so receiver won't be receiving anything. Now, what will be the next transition being triggered after that, and after that, and after that, until the system stabilizes? <laughs> Oh, wow, okay. So Kevin here, team four, wow, team, team 13. So starting T1, packet loss, and then T3, ah, yeah, timeout, hmm. And then it will what? retransmit and this time no loss it's gonna get to the receiver side and yeah that will trigger t11 and the egg will come back that will trigger t4 yes so kevin team four and rng silvercraft team 13 you guys are good Hey guys, do think about this. Uh -huh. Chances are very high that they appear in the exam. Okay, Darius here. Okay, good. Uh, you come up with the same thing as uh, team 4 and 13. Yes. Um, if this way of thinking is still a bit unusual, okay, R for you, do exercise more. Okay, Constantine. All right, good. Yeah, receiver cannot be doing anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So you also see here in RDT 3.0, the receiver is just the same as 2.2's receiver. Okay, there's nothing more the receiver can do in case of packet losses. Yeah, because receiver just doesn't know if there's anything coming at all. Okay, so receiver in 3.0 is only trying to handle bit error. So if there is bit error, send back NAC, otherwise positive back. Very good, you guys got it. So given the time that's left, uh, we'll not have enough time to cover the next topic, which is pipelining. So that is actually another interesting topic, uh, because until now, RDT 1.0, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, they are all stop, oh, and even for RDT 3.0, these are all called the stop and wait protocol. This is actually related to Constantine's question. Why do we use sequence number 0 and 1 only? Yeah, that's because exactly that we always send the data and then the sender will stop and wait until we get something back from the receiver or until we figure it out that the message might be lost, then we do the next thing, retransmit, for example. Okay. Therefore, we know for each packet that's currently we are stopping and waiting for, uh, what is the state of it? Okay, so we just need two numbers to indicate that. Now, you are asking a very good question here. What if we have two consecutive laws? So let's say we send one data. Let's go back to the state machine here. Okay, let's say we have another scenario. Okay, so the sender here sent one packet, okay, and the data is lost, so we time out and retransmit, right? So that will be T1 and then T3. What if the retransmission is also lost? Okay, we trigger T3 again, isn't it? Yeah, because we are still waiting for this packet zero, packet sequence number zero, and make sure that it arrives at the other end until we move on to send the new packet, which will carry sequence number one. So we just need two numbers to distinguish the packet we are sending at the moment. Okay, we can have consecutive packet loss, as I said, right? We send one copy, it's lost. And the tree transmission is also lost. But that is okay, we'll wait until one of the retransmission is successful. Okay, so all of these retransmissions will carry the same sequence number. Okay. Now, Constantine, your question is very, very interesting when we start talking about the pipeline RDT, where we'll be not just stop and wait, we'll actually send multiple packets in one flight, and then sender will stop and wait until all these multiple packets currently in flight gets acknowledged, then uh, just having sequence number 0 and 1 will not be sufficient. Okay? Uh, but the rule of thumb is this. If you have n packets in one flight okay, that you can tolerate being now between sender and receiver freely, the sequence number will be twice okay, that size. Okay? We'll definitely talk about this more in the pipeline protocol. So the RDT 3.0 here, although you feel that it's pretty complete, but it's very inefficient. Uh, if I just play the video a little bit, the beginning of the pipeline, you'll see. Okay. RDT 3.0. We spent quite a lot of time talking about it. And finally, it seems to be working for the bit error case and the packet loss case. And you know what? It works indeed. Okay, but it does not work that well. Okay. Let me use this example here uh, to explain. 
So let's suppose we have a pair of sender and receiver. In between them, there is this link, 1 gigabit per second. And the propagation delay one way is 15 milliseconds. And between the sender and receiver, the packet size is 8,000 bits. And that is equivalent of 1 kilobyte. So this is very typical of a TCP connections packet size. And you see also earlier during the trace routes, 15 millisecond is very typical uh, between two routers on a local area network. And one gigabit per second link, this is very commonly seen. Some of the Ethernet connections are actually 10 gigabits per second already. Now, let's try to calculate. First, the transmission time. Well, you learned already in chapter 2, right? It's the packet size divided by the transmission rate. So packet size, transmission rate, 1 gigabit per second. And we get 8 microseconds as the transmission time. Now, the performance we'll be looking at here is this. The utilization of the link between the sender and receiver. Okay. If this is high, that means, ooh, sender is actively sending all the time. So usually the throughput is going to be better. Okay. But if the utilization is low, well, the throughput is not going to get any better. All right. Now in order to calculate the utilization, let's recall how RDT 3.0 works. We send from the sender one data packet. And the sender there stop and wait for data to travel to the receiver. Receiver sends back and act and act travel the network again back to the sender. And that's when the sender can decide whether to send another data. So sender there again, stop and wait until data travel through the network, add travel through the network, and then send another one. So you see that the sender there is working in cycles. Mm -hmm. Stop and wait, stop and wait, stop and wait. And each cycle, it's using this much amount of time to transmit actual bits. And this amount of time, so plus the round trip weight uh, entirely for the entire cycle. So this is 0 0.008 millisecond. And this part, uh, sending the packet and then wait one way and another way. And here I'm ignoring the add packet transmission time because add packet is usually just very small okay so that's one round trip time plus yeah packet transmission time 30.008 millisecond so overall utilization on this link is very very low 0 0.00027 too many zeros and if I illustrate the scenario I just described there, sender, receiver, and this is timeline. Okay, at time zero, first packet bit is transmitted. So right here, first bit goes onto the link, and it takes this amount of time. That is the time to transmit all bits on the packet. So. Last packet bit transmitted is right at this time. Okay, that is the packet return, uh, packet transmission time L divided by R. And these bits is going to travel halfway uh, to the receiver and another halfway back to the sender. So first packet bit arrives right here. This is what the propagation delay. Okay, and this is also propagation delay. So 2 propagation delay plus L divided by R. This is one cycle. Within a cycle, only this amount of time sender is being active. Okay, Only this amount of data is being transmitted. While the entire duration, right? the sender can just keep pushing bits out okay, onto the network interface. So you see again, the network utilization L divided by R over the entire term, RTT plus L divided by R. Very low utilization. And that low utilization can be translated here. 
the throughput on the one gigabit link uh, is only 270 kilobits per second. This is not even uh, enough to send any video that would be sensible. So you see here, RDT 3.0, uh, the design itself, although it works, but it limits the use of the physical resources. Okay, we are only sending one packet and then stop and wait until we can send another one. Now that I show this plot, then you know, yeah, obviously to increase the utilization is to send multiple packets per round. Indeed. So let's look at the plot in a bit more detail, just like we did in the previous slide. So sender, receiver, and timeline again. So this is the time we send the first packet, the end of the first packet. This is the time, first bit arriving at the receiver, last bit arriving at the receiver. At this point, the receiver can send back acknowledgement. So this is the time the acknowledgement arrives at the sender. This is the sender can begin sending the next round of packets. So, how long is a round this time? Well, this is one-way delay, right? This is also one-way delay. So, round trip delay plus L divided by R. So, the same. Mm -hmm. In each cycle, we now send multiple copies of packets. So now we're sending three, so three L divided by R, right? So uh, utilization is now three times higher uh, than the stop and wait scenario. Yeah, and that is the pipeline RDT. So that is really what TCP is implementing. And that is what we're going to talk about after the midterm exam. All right. so. Uh, this is going to be all for today and um, uh, try to come a bit earlier. Uh, I'm going to put the Google Meet uh, URL online tomorrow about 9 a.m. So you guys will need to tune in. All right. And uh, I'm also going to be putting up uh, the Google online form for the midterm exam also about 9 a.m. But I won't be activating the link until 10.20. So, um, you know, uh, come try your network stuff out uh, a bit earlier just in case there's no accident. All right. Now, for those who want to try the Google Meet out, uh, just uh, go ahead and do it now. Um, so let me put the URL again on the FB post. Now, uh, I'm going to leave uh, the live stream for a bit longer, just as usual. So if you guys have further questions to ask, uh, feel free to post. Okay. Otherwise, that's all for this week. Go away and have lunch. All right, so, yep. Okay, so Zixian just joined. Good. All right, so. That's uh, Gabriel. Uh-huh. That was the username. G-A-V-R-E-N. Okay, good. Seems to be working. Yeah. Uh, make sure your video camera is working. Okay, that's uh, that's what is more important. Okay. All right, hi. Yep, I mean, uh, G-A-V-R-E-N, Gavin, I saw you, so you're good. Yeah, let me turn the microphone on.
Okay, so Xian's camera is also working. Good. I only see your eyes though. Maybe it's because. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you have very cute eyes though. <laughs> Where's the link? Ah, okay. Uh, it's further up, further up, all the way back up here. Zixian look a bit shy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. My nephew's eyes are like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so tomorrow you might want to make sure your microphone also works just in case you want to ask questions. <laughs> You're welcome. There you are. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, so you're Jian Wei. Wu uh, Jian Wei. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. You look like you've been in quarantine for several days. <laughs> uh huh, okay. Yeah. Look, look a bit, yeah, weeby. Weeby. <laughs> look a bit weeby. Okay, it's okay. Hey, that's a compliment. That's a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Polly is actually known the Jai Shen. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you guys seem to be getting a hang of this. Google Meeting is working for everyone. Great. Yeah, Otaku. Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, Otaku is actually genderless. <laughs> Okay, gender neutral. Okay. All right, good. So, yeah, um, yeah. By the way, I did not activate my camera for the um, for the Google Meet uh, because I need it for the stream. So it's still on. So it's still taking feed from my camera there. There you go, Rocket. <laughs> Try not to stereotype these terms, right? Otaku, who says that otaku needs to be only male? Okay. So females are, ju females are just as qualified as being otaku. <laughs> okay. We don't discriminate here, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. Just that uh, I don't know if the public space Wi-Fi is as good. Mm -hmm. So go, 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 go there. Just make sure you go somewhere the internet connectivity is stable. Okay. Yeah. But usually, the, so what I can say is that the questions on the exams are all kind of simple if you follow the lectures. Uh, there are actually more to exercise you, so in case you miss many of the videos and you know being a bit careless watching multiple videos on YouTube. So this is the chance uh, you get to learn something really. Okay, so the exams is designed so that it's almost like a review. Okay. Now those who reviewed a bit earlier then will have an advantage. Those who don't have time to review, it's okay. Uh -huh. You won't get as high uh, as the grades as others who get to review earlier. But it's okay, as long as you're learning. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know about you guys. Um, I don't see, you know, the grades mean all that much, except that those who have good grades are usually those who are disciplined, who knows very well managing time. And by the way, having the discipline and knowing how to manage time those are very, very important skills, okay? Um, when you need to work in a team, especially, work in a corporation, especially, 
Those skills are very important. But you, if you manage to live a lifestyle of an otaku, then those are not very important. Okay, so there are many ways of living. Okay, um, so you need to kind of find your own way. Um, so, yeah. So college training, in a way, is also trying to sort of train you guys so that you would live a nice corporate style, business style, uh, or a style collaborating with other people. Okay, that's usually where the economy is, um, where the money is. But if you are not having such a high pressure with the money, then you can definitely live a more flexible style. So, uh, as a so what I'm trying to say is that um, you just need a passing grade if your you know dream is becoming an ultimate otaku in the future. Okay, so Polly is living her dream. Okay, I don't have to really have physical contact with people. Okay, so um, I'm actually happy giving the online lecture. It's just that I'm not very really used to talking to cameras like this. Okay, so uh, it's a bit you know. It's a bit complicated. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. All right. So you see. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. Okay. It's about 20. So I'm going to end the stream here. And best of luck for tomorrow. The exam is going to be long. But just, you know, you try the best you can. Uh -huh. It's very easy to pass the course if you, you know, turning the assignments on time. And, you know, if you have good internet, you can Google things up and fill in the answers, all right? So, uh, take it easy and have fun. That is actually the most important thing. <laughs> good, so I'll see you on Google Me session tomorrow. And that's all for today.